Hi. Hello. Welcome. Yakshima. Yeah, uh, very my nice. Name, very nice. My name is Bora. My wife. My wife. Uh, very do nice. I, do I make you Randy, baby? <laughs> uh, you'll never guess what we what movie we we finally saw. Uh, uh you can guess. Maybe what, you can. what movies are out? <laughs> There's like two of them. Um, well, yeah. Welcome to Film Graders Processes. I'm Baru. I'm Jay Bearhat, and today we are talking uh, Borat. Subsequent movie film, which is which is a funny name, and so if me saying that didn't make you laugh. Yeah, l- laugh. go back and listen again. Make sure that you're make sure you're Can, hearing it. See, because it's hold on. Borat. Funny, fi- funny film. <laughs> hold on, we have to maximize the funny. Hold on, we gotta. Uh, Borat, subsequent movie film, delivery of prodigious bribe to American regime for make benefit, once glorious nation of Kazakhstan. Uh, it's like funny. It's like, if you didn't, okay, laugh, laugh. Can you laugh, yeah, please? You gotta, you gotta be laughing. Like, please, yeah. please, please listen. If, we, if you don't we laugh, really if need you don't this. laugh, Amazon is gonna send, uh, a, a drone to my house to shoot me with a gun. They gave, yeah, they gave have... guns to drones now. It's really weird. Yeah, Seattle. They're testing it out. Seattle's uh, just a mess right now. It kind of looks like one of those little like like those like drone like camera things that you'll see in movies, but it's got like a, a it's got like a robot arm, and the robot arm is holding a gun. Yeah, and then yeah, it yeah, shoots yeah. me with the gun. Anyway, thank so you please. Amazon for bringing us <laughs> Borat too. <laughs> thank you, uh, executive producer Jeff Bezos, for uh, bringing us Borat too. Oh, uh, isn't uh, the oh uh, yeah the. the Delivery something something Trump the, the, the Trump's future America. the future of uh well, think hey it's not Trump's America anymore you know right right hey. hey oh did Borat oh did Borat flip the election results did, Bor- did Borat do this I mean did- we could get into it <laughs> but I feel like the Rudy Giuliani scene I don't know weirdly convenient timing for that scene to come out. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so there's really um, a fucking lot to cover and talk about. Uh, (laughs) um, So maybe the best place to start is uh, Kazakhstan has a very interesting, seems to have like a very interesting relationship to uh, the Borat movies. I, I, you know, there's... um, kind of uh well there there was there's uh some sort of there's like a part of the wikipedia article where they're like they couldn't film parts of this movie in kazakhstan because people were just like no yeah. don't don't please don't no just we don't. remember what you did last time like pe- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like people literally don't know our country except for your movie yeah uh which this time around i guess they 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 released a diss track so kazakhstan released a diss track that you can go find they have tourism ads now of uh, tourists kind of checking out different parts of Kazakhstan, uh, which does look, you know, it does look like a beautiful country. It looks wonderful. Uh, but they they check it out and they go very nice, you know, like how Borat, like what Borat does. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, that's... I guess that's one way to play with a hand you've been dealt. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um. So that's that's kind of uh, the the first thing to kind of sort of cover about this movie. Um, past that, I don't know. Let's 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 react. Let's process a little bit. Jay, how did you, how did you feel? How did you feel about the movie? Man, I guess overall, I I know that you know we're the SJW feminist cuck whatever uh, critters. Um, but I went in with an open heart and an open mind because there's still a part of me which did go to high school and does yeah. love a good stupid offensive joke. Sure. They, yeah, I they... mean, I won't. I won't say that I wasn't like scandalized into laughter by certain parts of this movie. Definitely. Yeah, but man, this kind of so when I say this humor is aged really badly, I don't mean in the like because it's offensive way. I mean in that like, man, it is sure is not Bush's America anymore. Way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, a hundred percent. There's like a great review uh, from this person I follow on Letterboxd named PD187. Uh, mm. Yeah, there it is, PD187. 
uh, where they, they said, in 2006, it felt like you'd uncovered a hidden secret getting people to say shitty, dumb stuff out loud. Now everybody blasts it at you 24-7 like one of those COVID particle sims. We as a society have progressed past the need for Borat. Yeah. <laughs> and like, that's sort of like what it is, is like there's so many scenes of him doing like the Borat bit of like offensive, like outdated, like things. And whereas in the original film that works because like people's reactions to it are either like funny or their reactions to it are like they go along with it in a way that's really embarrassing because they're not like thinking about the fact that this is being recorded. Sure, yeah. Uh, but now everybody is aware that if you do something like that, it'll be recorded, or they just open, or they just openly don't care and are racist in public anyway. So mm-hmm. everyone's reactions to the, like anything he does is to just go, okay, yeah. Yeah, so there was that one scene in the cake shop where he asks, like, the cake shop owner to write, like, Jews will not replace us on a cake, and she just does it and without, like, flinching, which is like, oh, man, isn't that crazy? Isn't it crazy that someone would, you know, like, just say yes to that and write that? And Which, like, my initial reaction is just like, okay, so you're going to kind of respond to this, like, sort of ideological, like, splitting of America and the, like, the lack of education and the lack of any sort of, like, assistance for people as as this kind of, like, personal failing again after last time where it when it clearly didn't really work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now you have this, like, class of people that is, like, <sighs> I guess uneducated, but whose fucking fault is that? Not theirs, uh, but like, you know, but but you're just going to kick sand in their fucking face uh, in spite of the fact that the government has not, you know, is just leaving them on their own. And a lot of people in America, more and more people in America just do not have a fucking pot to piss in. But, yeah. you know, the sort of liberal pedant like ed- entertainment industry guy is going to come around and just make fun of them and that'll make the problem go away. And Fantastic. Even, it even is it's fa- 20 fucking 20. That shit's not going to work. It doesn't work. I'm sorry. And even in like that scene at the cake shop, it's like you now know like the response isn't like she goes along with it or she agrees with it. She's just like, okay, in a very clear like whatever whatever will get this scene over with. <laughs> like, yeah. Like that's everyone's reaction in like every one of these scenes is like, I am aware that I am being filmed. Sure, I'll just do like whatever. And the problem is like it's not like there's no way to get good stuff, like good reactions or like that kind of like media stuff. Cause like Eric Andre does it. Nathan for you sure. does it. Cause like Nathan for you has stuff like the, um, the thing like that made me think of was like the caricature guy episode where he baits the guy into doing like racist caricature art. But then the guy just goes like, like does like 110%. And you can see even Nathan Fielder, like the actor is like, whoa not where i expected <laughs> that to go uh yeah it, like stuff like that works because it's like they, they they understand the ways in which you have to like bait people to like get those kinds of things to come out in a way that's like funny or embarrassing or like when he's doing the like the the daddy dating service one and they happen to just catch the guy like explaining the world trade center seven to his date like that's just like that stuff's really funny and then in this one it's just like Borat walks into his synagogue dressed as a racist caricature of a Jewish person and the people just react by going why are you dressed like that oh you have a camera okay this is probably a bit for something (laughs) yeah yeah and like okay to this is kind of skipping forward a little bit uh, but there is a babysitter character uh, who, uh, let me see if I can find, Janice Jones. Um, Janice Jones, to me, kind of represents, like, the moral center of this movie. She's, like, really, uh, you know, she she's one of the few people in this entire movie that reacts like a normal person to uh, the rampant, like, completely insane, like, misogyny that... Uh, you know, that these characters are, like, playing out. And her reaction to the movie after it came out was, uh, highly, highly paraphrasing here, uh, 
Yeah, I didn't really know that they were playing a trick on me. I feel kind of, you know, I'm I'm not really super happy with it. Uh, and I think that that's kind of like when the moral center, when the person who is holding your movie together is kind of coming out against like what your movie is doing. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that kind of hammers hammers the point home a little bit better. That just like. I don't know how helpful this is, man. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know how how useful it is to just kind of like, oh, catch people to catch America in a bad place. Like, yes, we know we're in a bad place right now. We're trying to figure it out. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. That was that that just struck me for sure. Like hearing that. The I think one of the few scenes that I consider like good shock humor in that way is probably the olympia rally and that's just because there is like a level of like him pushing it further and further and the audience just meeting it like each time that like kind of becomes funny just because it becomes this thing of just like it becomes like a weird version of like chicken yeah. Uh and that's like the only part where like it works because it's like there's a tension there where it's like is is Sasha Baron Cohen going to break character before the audience that he's like or before the the audience that he's performing in front of like breaks character air quotes. Right, right, yeah. And like Yeah, I don't know. And I, and I will say kind of backtracking just a little bit. He did Sasha Baron Cohen did donate a whole bunch of money to Janice Jones's community. So, you know, it's probably it's, you know, it's kind of complicated. The thing I said before, it's like I just feel like this type of like humor doing Borat again. And like especially when the film is sort of to an extent acknowledging in the first opening parts, kind of like the limits of the Borat model for comedy. But then to just yeah. kind of do it again anyway, like feels very like limp. Like it, like like it feels like you know like it, it's sort of the the late season late late series Simpson thing of like if we lampshade it by like having Borat say a bunch of his funny catchphrases and then have a joke about how like oh I can't just be Borat because like everybody knows who Borat is, uh, right? It, it becomes like by lampshading that, therefore we don't have to like change our approach. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's I don't know. Yeah, so uh, that's. Basically, the weakest parts of the movie are where it's kind of like retreading the same ground of like the original film. Um, so, yeah, no, not 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 a huge not a huge fan. Uh, however, what I will say and to kind of flip it into a sort of more like complimentary uh, reaction, I guess. Um, as as much as a lot of the bits really didn't hit for me, uh, I did think that the best part of the movie was the co-star uh, who played by Maria uh, Bakalova. Maria Bakalova, who plays Tutar, who's uh, Borat's like daughter, his like 15 year old daughter who he like brings to America to offer to, you know, some sort of uh to offer to like either Trump or Pence, but eventually Giuliani, and that's like that whole thing. Uh, she did a really good job. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I actually would like call her like a, a really good heart to the film. And there's like a seed of like a a better movie in using this film as like a weird way to tell this like story between like Borat and like having to like come to accept his daughter. Uh, and love her in a like misogynistic culture that he lives in, but also just like appreciate her as like a person. Uh, the actress has is like clearly having like way more fun with the character than uh, I think Sasha is having with Borat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no, she's she is really yeah she she does an incredible job. She uh, she definitely clearly has like really good improv skills because the way she like like her interactions with strangers consistently seem to be like really, really good. and like she really like knows what she's doing and like how to like not bait people, but like how to shock them in a way that will get a funny reaction. She's, yeah, she's doing exactly. the more like Eric Andre school of like prank comedy where it's just like she's just like, I'm just gonna behave in a way that will like, get like that cringe comedy element going <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah a hundred percent and uh i think the 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 kind of centerpiece of that and probably my favorite like bit 
because you know every every movie that does kind of this, this sort of shock humor like hidden camera type of thing that it or like every every piece of work like I, th- I feel this way about eric andre too like those are like really 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 hit and miss uh but the the one that really hits is the debutante ball yeah uh, yeah <laughs> the, the debutante ball is like the piss christ like centerpiece of this movie for me um basically the scene in which she is dancing for all of these like rich georgia like magnates who are clearly just like racist dinosaurs and she just like shows off her like bloody underwear and like just you know it's 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 beautiful um the sort of like contextual build up to it as well where like she she kind of uh she she and she and Sasha Baron Cohen do kind of effortlessly uh reveal that these like rich Georgia you know old people are just the fucking worst yeah. <laughs> uh they he says something like I'll sell her to you for $500 about his daughter to some like to some like rich white guy and he's just like oh yeah yeah and he like he like jokes about it and his daughter is immediately just like what the fuck is wrong like they start a fight oh i forgot about that (laughs) yeah (laughs) like that's good um and so that's like if you are here's the thing that that type of comedy is always going to hit hit for me like if it's specifically directed at like rich people and just like the fucking racist dinosaurs that just ruined the fucking South and just turned it into a fucking nightmare. Uh, you know, like the South, the South is beautiful. Rich people really just want to fucking have wanted to destroy it since time immemorial, you know, blah, 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 blah. But yes, that, that was the high point of the movie for me. Definitely. Um, also, also, I guess turn around into a bit more complimentary. Uh, I, I felt like the ending of the film, uh, for it being very clearly something that they came up with while filming the movie because uh, coronavirus happened, <laughs> uh, I thought was I thought was a really good bit, and I thought the bit of him, of them getting Tom Hanks to appear for a cameo in in front of a backdrop of Australia, uh, to imply <laughs> that he got it from Borat is is a very funny bit. Yeah, no, that's that's really good. That 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 kind of that kind of shocked me. I was like, oh, okay, okay, you guys have writers. Yeah, no, it's it's. I was like, okay, this is this is like a good a good conceit to even like kind of like underscore like the weird semi like just like the weird way in which like yeah, if you were traveling all over the country such as we've been doing, you <laughs> might. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, all gas no breaks was actually another one's ones i was trying to remember earlier for like the kind of things that are good oh, yeah, at like yeah. actually like just there i feel like there has to be a specific presence to like really pull out good material now and i feel like that that presence is that you kind of have to be um a bit of an you have to be way more of an overreactor or i think some of the better ones like nathan and all gas no breaks guy are really good at just being like under reactors and having that kind of face that like makes you want to like talk to them and doesn't really yeah. and then just like for whatever reason they're very good at getting people to just shut their filter off yeah <laughs> just like the blank smile of just like yeah no yeah and go ahead that that that's 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 really effective that's like yeah the what they do is really good at just getting people to kind of <laughs> Go on a rant and be like, you totally know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And then his interviewer yeah, was absolutely. like, sure. <laughs> this movie made headlines for a very obvious reason. I guess that we should get into it. Yeah. Uh, so Rudy Giuliani. Got his dick is, out. No. <laughs> had his dick. Had his dick out. Uh, <sighs> so it's. I ha- I hesitate almost. I mean, like, it's difficult to talk about because. It's difficult to really kind of sit with the fact that all sort of like major and uh, mainstream uh, political sort of fights right now have a lot to do with uh, <laughs> the rape and trafficking of children. Who yeah, could have guessed? Yeah. Uh, really, really bad fucking timeline. Um, to me... It absolutely stands to reason that the people who are like loudest on on the right wing, uh, 
are the most, you know, willing to kind of engage with these systems that allow the rich to prey on, you know, the poor middle class of America and to kind of get around the law and to be just the worst fucking perverts you could possibly fucking imagine. Yeah, no, it's it's, uh, it's really it, the far end of like the way in which the the all of the the rich and powerful exploit people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's this like projection thing and this like trying to kind of control people thing and and you know, much in the way that uh, the guy that started QAnon is uh currently in the Philippines uh because he can't stay in the US because he is a convicted sex offender of of minors. So that's always fun. We love projection. Uh which is not to say that the left wing does not have its own uh issues with that when it comes to its own rich people. Uh but I you know, let's let's all come together and just uh figure out that maybe the problem is the wealth distribution i don't know there's it's a complicated problem yeah i mean and they in in borat they they kind of are uh, tax tacitly acknowledge that they don't i don't think there's any rec- acknowledgement of like democrats specifically but there is the kevin spacey joke yeah yeah absolutely so uh, which i i will admit is one of the few shock jokes that got a laugh out of me it was just <laughs> it was just the the bit of like oh be, we're no longer misogynists so we sell male uh male brides as well and then a big box of like children that is lifted up and it just says k spacey on it yeah really <laughs> that one made me go kind of like oh come on i but like yeah i mean you're not wrong i i i think that like a big reason why to because like that's a that's a pretty big thorough line in this film is essentially the trafficking of children and like sexual exploitation, not exactly handled handled like gracefully, but it's like from the onset there's like you know the Borat sees the coverage of Trump uh, hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein. There's recurring Jeffrey Epstein jokes in it. There's jokes about like uh, various politicians uh, fucking children stuff like that. Uh, yeah. there's the entire like bait of the fact that his daughter is supposed to be a 15 year old girl. Um, yeah. and I d- do wonder how much of that thorough line comes from, uh, the Bruno incident. I think it was Bruno, mm. uh, where while filming Bruno, uh, this like bit that he tried to do where he was trying to bait some, some like concierge into something, uh, like it was some sort of thing where it was like, oh, like I like his character like is like a like a um, a diplomat or something, and he's like, oh, I I like slept with this like underage teenager, and we need to like dispose of him, and the concierge like goes along with it, and then basically like kind of reveals that like, oh yeah, like you know I I know a guy who can like get you like underage like minors to like have sex with. In a very like, yeah, this I is a thing that, that I'm in a very like, this is a thing that I am used to doing for rich and powerful people. And they like turned the footage over to the FBI and the FBI just was like, nah, don't worry about it. Nah, it's not. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Fucking crazy. Which like, yeah, that's. Ugh. So it's like, I, I definitely like th- that being a recurring theme in this definitely felt like that had to be a response to like his experience of that and being like. Okay, so this is like this is like just how politics in America is. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, this isn't this is maybe me being a little bit uh kind of unrealistic, maybe a little bit idealistic. Uh if you go through that experience and you find yourself uh you know, in the same room as one of the most powerful men in America who is imminently expressing interest in having sex with someone who has expressed that they are a minor several times uh and you do not (laughs) uh you are kind of doing everyone in the world a huge disservice uh which i understand that's illegal but you know what else is fucking illegal you would never guess you'd never guess just fun stuff to think about fun things to think about comedy movie laughs lots of laughs thank you amazon Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Jeff Bezos, Amazon, who definitely does not have any connections to child sex trafficking rings. <laughs> there are absolutely none, none whatsoever. There, it, it's to even suggest would be uh, utterly ridiculous and absurd. Uh, coincidentally, the film does also mock, like you know, QAnon people, but only 
only seems to give credence to, only seems to cover their more wacky beliefs and not you know the Jeffrey Epstein thorough line which is <laughs> which is something that they're like no that's true but only for Trump <laughs> yeah I mean uh yeah, I don't know. I mean, the the stuff about the QAnon shit is just like it does not. It what, again, it doesn't really cut to the heart of the matter. Like these guys don't have a pot to piss in. Yeah, the, the, these... no. The, the, when he's when he's talking to the QAnon guys, I was like, what's sa- weird about this scene is that it's clearly supposed to like look at these wacky things these guys believe in, but like it ended up making QAnon like believers like. Not I like when I say sympathetic, I I want to be clear here. I don't mean the like psychos on Twitter who are like where we go one, we go all and are like shooting up pizza joints. But because sure, the yeah. QAnon believers that they show in this movie, like pretty clearly aren't like hardcore QAnon believers. They're just guys who've been like, yeah, I've seen this information going around. And like, it sounds like, you know, that, yeah, that sounds like something that would actually happen. And there's like no positive question about like, how did we get to a point where to these guys, uh, Hillary Clinton drinking like uh, blood from a child that is full of adrenaline in order to become more powerful, like doesn't immediately sound like car- like a cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to be kind of receiving that perspective from like a British guy, like, oh, great. Thank you. As if you guys as if you guys aren't a fucking mess yeah. as well. <laughs> It's 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 such a it's such a like weird scene where it's like him trying to bait these like ah oh, clearly we got these like crazy ignorant dudes uh to like go along with our bit and him just trying to bait them and them just like not taking it not because like they're not you know whatever but because they're just like dude they're just like poor ass like motherfuckers who like don't who who are going off of like the bit of information that they have in a world and their gut instincts. And yeah. you're in here being like, wow, I can't believe these dumb idiots don't even know that, like, this stuff has been debunked. Yeah, yeah. Like, the real, like, people always kind of want to, like, take the sort of narrative and and twist it into just, like, oh, people are just so stupid. People are just so stupid and so easy to control and so poorly educated. When, like, the real story is just, like, people in America, increasingly so... And and across you know across class lines across race lines like uh, all all of this shit like people have nothing people have less and less and less as time goes on we know about how you know like wages are stagnant but prices are going up everything's just fucked more and more people are I was reading today like more people are tipping over from precariously above poverty just into poverty just into straight up poverty yeah yeah so. You know, I don't know. Like, should the message really be for the consumer at this point, or should it be? Should the message really be for uh, the oligarchy? <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. Ex- exactly. Like, like it should should the satire be being aimed at the people that are trying to navigate the world in the best way they can? And again, I, I, I'm emphasizing here. There's a reason I'm talking about like the fact that it's weird that of the QAnon people they selected for this film, they just chose two guys who like clearly yeah. aren't super invested in it and just like believe it because it's a thing they've heard and not like, you know, when no gas, no breaks gets people like that. He gets the people who are like really fucking hyped and wild and like make good spectacle. When Borat gets it, he gets two guys who like are willing to give a homeless dude uh free housing yeah. <laughs> in exchange for just like hanging out with them uh while they check out while they check facebook in their like kind of like cool little cabin house that they have and like the the other thing about that scene is that like even in my like coastal lib sort of brain the the bit of him doing these like calisthenics exercises with like a big fat dildo on for really no reason like all that footage of him trying to kind of bait them and to try to like see, you know, oh, they're going to be so I'm going to put on a dildo and I'm going to exercise and they're going to get so homophobic and weird about it. And they and, just ignore him and they just ignore him, and which like was really <laughs> which like, again, made them kind of sympathetic. It would like just like, oh, yeah, no, you are the weird one. You are like the you are kind of being 
weirdly attention seeking in this moment. It's uh, it, it, it's really weird how much he ended up making the QAnon guys like more sympathetic than himself. Uh, yeah, I did like the joke, and I especially liked it because like the the QAnon guys like go along with it, where he he Alexa orders a bunch of. By the way, great sh- great great brand integration there. Uh, he Alexa orders uh, flashlights, and they send him a box of flashlights. And the yeah. guys just start laughing and they're like, oh, my God, it's because when you say flashlight, it sounds like flashlight. <laughs> and it's like, I was like, that's cute. That's like a cute little like prank that just like these guys are like, ha ha, that's real funny. Yeah. <laughs> but like, again, I think it's the same thing I think you do. Where it's like he's clearly trying to bait them into being like, oh, look, I'm doing all this weird sex stuff. Like, isn't that like, oh, are you are you triggered? <laughs> And they like <laughs> are clearly you... <laughs> aren't. <laughs> they clearly are you triggered, conservative? Yeah. <laughs> the the scene of the yeah. Holocaust survivor was like weird, <laughs> right? Like that was a weird scene. <sighs> it's I understand kind of where they were coming from in the writer's room of just like, man, wow, isn't it crazy that Holocaust denial is such a fucking huge thing? Is there any way that we can, like, talk about this? Without giving, like, oxygen to it sort of a thing? Yeah, yeah. And, like, I... It it made me uncomfortable. (laughs) Yeah, right? Like, like, that's what I mean. Or it's like, that was, like, a weird scene. I I think especially just because it's, like, the way they end up talking about it is, like, pranking a Holocaust survivor, basically. (laughs) Yeah. And okay, the thing the thing about it is I I I I can't be sh- I can't be absolutely certain. I think that the Holocaust survivors were kind of in on the joke. Well, um I I was looking at the controversy page and it's it's in it's it's in argument because uh Judith Evans, the woman who he talks to, died before the film's release. So her heirs have brought a lawsuit to the film claiming that she did not consent to have her face in the film and Sasha Baron Cohen mm-hmm. is claiming that he he like told her in advance like hey I'm playing a character I'm going to be saying some anti-semitic things like this is a character for a movie so it, it it's it is contested I assume that there was some sort of break in between one of the cuts where he explained what was going on uh whether or not she like agreed to go along in the sense of like this is going to be a movie released on Amazon and not like this is some weirdo dude's art project whatever uh is is yeah. probably where the debate comes up yeah and i mean it it's it's kind of like Sasha Baron Cohen is a Jewish comedian like this stuff clearly is very close to him for that reason like having like as an honest reaction to Holocaust denialism, I can understand it. At the same time, it feels a little bit so. Like the whole the movie like hinges on uh, not only not only kind of uh, you know not creating like a fictionalized Kazakhstan to take advantage of, but there's like a lot of jokes like, oh, we're gonna inject you with d- tears, which like if you're from Europe, <laughs> you know that that is a is a slur. About a people that are oh, routinely Romani, yeah. <laughs> the the Romani people who are you know not treated very well at all. So I mean, like it it it's really obviously it's really fucking complicated. I I would most describe that scene as just doing too much. Yeah, uh, it, it's funny because like it's it's a thing in Europe. It's not really air quotes as much of a thing here in the U.S., but it always could be. <laughs> There was like an actual like <laughs> news report I saw going around that was complaining about like uh literally like just just like stereotypes about the Romani people like it, as like refugees that were like ruining a town that I was like it, I was like are Americans even like plugged in? like how many Americans are familiar enough with the Romani people to like have this stereotype like as like a prefix in their brain and it was just like f- like like mainstream news talking about this yeah (laughs) uh yeah um so okay the other kudos that i do want to give to the film the justin trudeau joke is very funny (laughs) (laughs) it's extremely funny 
Uh, that's all I want to say about yeah, that. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I like when he's when he's willing to put egg on the face of. I think it's like the thing that like makes this film's like humor so weirdly dissonant is that it's both trying to thread the needle of like liberal Democrat, like Saturday Night Live, like clapback kind of humor, mm-hmm. while still being like edgy prankster humor of Borat. And those types of humor is just like don't gel. They really don't. I mean, yeah, Baron Baron Cohen's kind of career has been just a lot of like it's 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 been just a lot of like shock, uh just trying to kind of shock people and that that stuff is becoming more and more radioactive as the world just kind of gets more, you know, more authoritarian, more more fascist, more, you know, more white supremacist, yada yada yada. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's, it's a really difficult. Uh, it's a difficult needle to thread for sure. I do really want to know more about like the footage that was very, very clearly not used, but like filmed of the daughter like infiltrating the like right wing like media sphere. <laughs> Yeah, so that was a, that was kind of like a mini feature that they published on Twitter that like the uh that Maria Bakalova uh was like hired by OAN and and went to the White House and spoke maskless to like Donald Trump Jr. uh like the fact that all of that the fact that so much of that shit just didn't make it in is kind of crazy to me. That's yeah, because like it's like that seems like that that seems like we're like your meat and potatoes of this kind of a project would be was like, oh, we managed to like infiltrate like like the right wing media sphere and like bait them into saying things. Yeah. Yeah, that's and and that's like more of what I'm interested in. Like I I, like I'm more interested in these characters infiltrating yeah, like, you know, industries, uh, industries of misinformation and, and fucking around with, like, political leaders and, like, political families and shit like that than, you know, the the QAnon stuff or fucking whatever. Uh, but I don't know if it if it wasn't uh, if it wasn't movie worthy, then it wasn't movie worthy. And that's that's that. Yeah, no, I think. I guess like that's that's uh, I, I guess ultimately what it comes down to is that. We don't really need Borat. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. And here's here's the other thing. Uh, you'll never guess. I mean, like, okay, Rupert Murdoch was the one who is like was like the first, I guess, to announce that there was going to be a Borat sequel. So just kind of let that simmer. Wow. I guess like none of this shit fucking matters. Like. <laughs> The, the uh, you know, ac- across both sides of the, like, fake sort of, uh, you know, American minimized, like, political, uh, you know, range, uh, uh, rich people just kind of control, you know, whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. Nothing fucking matters. None of this matters. Uh, manufacture consent. Very nice. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, wee, wa. Whoa, whoa, wee, wa. False choice. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining us yeah. here in america As we talk about amazon's latest uh latest uh <laughs> reputation laundering project <laughs> oh jesus fucking lord um yeah so we are uh all done with uh chicago international film festival we're gonna be we're actually about to record a uh sort of roundup episode where we talk about the things that we watch separately so keep an eye out for that, of course. We also have a Throws It Back uh, this month for movies that are kind of about like teen girl drama. We were inspired by, we've you know, we've said this before, we were inspired by House of Hummingbird and Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, which were two really, really, really fantastic films that we watched this year. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have a Discord as well. Uh, if you haven't joined the Discord, Discord. there'll be a link down below. Uh, come hang out. It's been a lot of fun. We, uh, for, if you're a patron, we've been trying to like use it more to also like give people a heads up of like, Hey, here's what we're going to be talking about soon in our little patrons only discord lounge. 
<laughs> then we got like you know channels for movies, channels for whatever. Meet other meet other people like uh freaking movies. Yeah, uh, the movie the fans. Movies fans. There's there's a lot of them. Pick up the movie phone <laughs> and call the movie <laughs> fans. Yeah. Um. And it looks like for our uh yep yeah, for our throws it back this coming month or this month actually. Uh, we're gonna be watching the Virgin Suicides. Yes, uh, which I haven't I haven't seen yet. Looks really interesting. Yeah, neither do I. Uh, I'm very very excited to watch it. Yeah. If you are supporting, thank you so much. And if you aren't, uh, you know, consider it. patreoncom slash critters. Yeah. And uh, as always, I am Jay Bear Hat. I am Baru. Mm, bye. Bye. Yeah.